Hello and welcome to tutorial 97 from markplex.com. Please go there to join our email list. And uh, I was asked by a Gold Pass member who had used the new version of Program 35, which draws line levels and uh, reflects those on different charts, whether a function could be uh, created that would be used, for example, in a indicator and uh, the results of the calculation in the indicator could then be reflected in real time on other charts and that is effectively what I've done in this tutorial it's very um, very simple at least from the uh, indicator that sends the information and the function a little more complicated in the program that draws the lines but what I want to do is just go through each of those in turn and show you what they do so first of all what I've done is just created a very simple indicator that plots two moving averages and this is applied to at the moment a pound dollar chart and then the latest level is reflected on two other charts. So you can see here that uh, the value there, 1.65768, and then you can see here 1.6575, um, or rather 7682. The same levels applied from the sending chart to the receiving charts. And really the, the idea behind this tutorial is to show you how you could create a function that you could use in your own indicators to reflect a real-time level on several other charts. So firstly, let's have a look at the actual indicator, which is very simple. What I'm doing is just calculating a exponential moving average, and I'm plotting that, and I'm doing the same for a moving average, and I'm plotting that. Then what I've done is created a function, and what this function has are three inputs. One is a unique name because you could, for example, have several sets of charts and you want to share information just within those groups. We've got value one, which is this calculation here, and value two. So that is effectively how this little function is applied. The function itself is also very, very simple. So let's go to the function and you'll see here that all we do on the last bar of the chart is we set a name double using the unique name, which was this name that we use within groups. Uh, one, I've just created two uh, different places, two different um, GV set name doubles. Uh, the key is made up of unique name plus one, unique name plus two. And into that, I've put these values, send value one and send value two, as we just saw in the calling indicator. So, so far, very, very simple. And incidentally, I'm going to make these three programs plus the workspace available uh, as a download at markplex.com if you want to save yourself some typing. Okay, and probably the most complicated bit of this is the program that actually draws the horizontal lines. And this is using some of the advanced TradeStation stuff, so it won't work in multi-charts, unfortunately. So let's let's just go through this and I'm not going to talk too much about the variables and the inputs because we'll hopefully you can just see what they are. Um, we're using several methods here and uh, the first one is draw initial lines. The second one is move line. Then we're using a timer so that we can see uh, when we can do a check on the global variable to see if there's been any changes every um, every elapsed amount of time. And then finally, we've got the the uh, the once statement where we're doing some of the instantiation and so on. So what I'm going to do is start with the the one statement and then go back and explain some of the other things. Oh, and incidentally, right at the bottom here, we've got a another little bit of uh, program. And what this does is at the close of each bar, we just make sure that the text labels are moved to the right of the chart so they don't gradually drift over to the left. OK, so once and uh, we're going to be using a couple of vectors. One of them we're doing, we're storing our um, line objects in the line refs vector. And we're going to be storing our text objects in the text refs vector. So once we're going to instantiate those, 
We're going to set up our timer. And uh, incidentally, if you don't know how to set up a timer, you can very quickly do that just by clicking on toolbox and double clicking on timer. Then if you go to the user generated code, you should be able to get an idea what the syntax is for the timer. We've got a line move event handler and that is uh, based on the timer. And then we need to find out how many decimal places that we're going to be including in the text objects that we're drawing near the lines. Having done all that, we can draw our initial lines using the draw uh, initial lines method. So let's go back to see if we can find the draw initial lines method. Now this looks more complicated than it is because because we're only doing two levels uh, what I've done effectively is just copy the code for the first line and then uh, use that as the code for the second line if you were doing a number of lines you might wish to set up some sort of loop here so that you would go through and you wouldn't literally have to uh, copy and paste the uh, syntax again so I think um, in terms of creating trend lines and drawing objects you might just want to copy this uh, this syntax essentially what we do we create DT points and then we create a trend line by using DT points then we can set some various attributes of the trend line like extend right extend left persist so that if it's created on a tick it doesn't disappear the next tick the color of the line the weight of the line then having created the, the, uh, the drawing object, we need to add it to the chart, which we do here. And then we need to store it in our line refs vector. So that's what we do for the first line. And incidentally, the level here, we, we're getting that from using the GV get name double, uh, unique name plus one. And I don't know if I mentioned it already, but you do need the global variable DLL to be able to use this program, which is something you can get for free from tradestation.com in the forums and uh, I will put a link for how you can do that. Okay and then in terms of the line text we're doing something very similar. We're creating um, the text label initially using the num to string of the level. We're setting various attributes of the line text um, such as the font and the color. Then we're adding the line text to the chart and we're adding it to drawing um, text of refs vector. So that's what we do for line one and then we do it really exactly the same for line two except this time we're getting obviously the the value stored in unique name plus or unique unique name two and then we're going through the same procedure again. So that is how we initially create the lines. What then happens is we have the timer which would then every uh, whatever you set the uh, interval to be, calculate what the current right of the chart is and then run the move line method. So let's just have a look at the move line method which we've got here. And uh, we're going to be doing this on the last bar of the chart. In each case, like just like we did in the initial initialization of the lines, we need to find out the latest value for line one in the global variable. Then what we do is we get back from the line refs vector the trend line and we do that using the syntax my trend line one equals line refs in the zero element as type trend line we do the same thing for the text refs uh, the um, the text uh, object and then what we do is we look at the the, uh, the trend line that we've just uh, taken out of the vector we find out the level of that trend line which we use using endpoint.price and we compare it with the line value. This you'll recall is the value we've just taken out of the global vector. If that is different we know that we have to relocate the line and relocate the text. So we take the, um, the line val and we put in the, uh, the text string, we change the text string. We also create a, a DT point and um, we change the position of the text reference using the text reference dot point value. If you were putting this from, from scratch, you'd be able to use the uh, the dot operator will. Um, if you have your system set up like this, you press dot, you'll see all the various options that you can you can get there to save yourself some some typing. And then we move we change the position of the 
trend line using the set start point and set end point. So you'll notice that we're setting those at the exactly the same position. We'll be using extend to the right and extend to the left. That's why we get the horizontal line. And then we do exactly the same for the, the second line. So I don't think I probably really need to explain that. You can see the syntax there. So that is almost everything. The final thing that we've added to the bottom of this program is we've got the situation where we need to make sure that we move the text ref to the right of the chart every time we, um, we close a bar. And we do that by calculating the date time of the right of the chart. We get the line value from the global variable for both one and two. And then we, uh, we get the line ref, the my line text is the text vector in the zero element of a vector. And then we just relocate the text. So we first will create a DT.2 uh, at the right of the chart and at the line value. And then we go my line text, which is the text that we've just received, the text object we just retrieved from the vector, and we set its position using dot point value. And we do exactly the same for the second line. And again, if you were doing this for a larger number of lines, you'd probably want to set up some sort of loop to go through these so that you literally don't have a mammoth program copying the, uh, the syntax over and over again. And then very finally, we've got this move line. So if uh, we do get a change, uh, we get a new uh, tick on the receiving chart, then we want to just check and make sure and see if there's been any changes in the values in the global variable that we need to change the position of. So anyway, um, that is the program. As I say, if you want to save yourself a little bit of typing, then uh, please feel free to uh, download this from markplex.com. Anyway, I hope you will find this useful in your own programs. Thank you.